Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living in your aquarium. My aquariums. Uh, I'm going to be honest here. I've been dragging this week. I've been having a um, really bad um, autoimmune flare with my lupus. Uh, so you'll see my face is all puffy and my um, as are my lips and my joints for that matter. So I've, I've been told by the doctor not to lift more than about 10 pounds. Well, a gallon of water weighs one or eight pounds so uh it's limited what i can do in maintenance and i've been having to do one gallon water changes like maybe 10 times a day um for like three or four at a time 10 different times a day and it's really draining but at least i'm home and resting in between and getting to work on other youtube uh projects and research but the point I have is that oftentimes when you think that you're neglecting your fish the most, as long as you're a semi-good fish parent and you give them quality food, you've set up the tank right, things turn out okay. So I want to show you this happy little story so far. Alright, so here we have the famous Turkana Jewel Cichlids. And wouldn't you look at it, they have about a gabillion babies. Uh, I got these from Kenny and Danny Edwards down in Portland, uh, when I went down there for, uh, not Fishtoberfest or anything, it was a trip before that. Look at how bright these fish are when they have their fry. Uh, but there are probably a good 150 fry, 100 fry, um, all together, because they're all the way down to the, the bottom of the tank. Now, in this tank, they have been exceedingly mean. I haven't really even attempted to put them with anything else. Because of this and because they kind of have unique water parameters um, from Lake Turkana, where where their name also comes from, I've kind of just uh, let them do their own thing. Uh, but I expected that they would have babies right here and all this mulm and yucky, uh, you know, uh, sawasertong and mulm in this well-cycled tank up front. Well, of course, I, I kind of neglected them for, I mean, I haven't cleaned the front glass for two weeks, and the nitrates are at around 50 parts per million, which for me, I like to keep them at under 20 or 30 if I can help it. And all of a sudden, I checked during a, a live stream on uh, Kevin's show tonight, and I see that there are literally a hundred babies and that the pair has cornered all the other uh, so juvenile slash adult uh, other one, uh, fish that are in there with them that are Turkanas, uh, jewel cichlids. And for some reason, I don't know why they're hanging out mid tank. It seems like a bad strategy for keeping your babies alive, but they are hanging out mid tank and uh, holding their ground here. And, uh, they've got a whole lot of babies so the thing I need to do now literally like as soon as we can is get those other Turkanas out of there can you guys even can we even see them see they're hiding they're afraid they are terrified of the terror that is a pair of Turkana jewel cichlid parents I mean they've literally chased them off uh, way farther than they need to I mean even the babies are coming with them to terrorize the other ones so we need to get those out. We need to get those three adults out. And then sooner than later, we need to get the babies away from the parents because at some point, usually the dad snaps and starts eating the babies. But I just wanted you guys to see what a beautiful fish this is. I mean, no filter, no anything on there. I mean, if anything, we got a scuzzy filter of algae. And I mean, they glow like they are neon. It is incredible. So uh, I just wanted to show you guys them in their full glory with their babies. Um, I'm gonna get all that out of there, but you know what? I think the algae was key in that it had lots of, I've been feeding infusoria and other little micro uh, flora and fauna in the form of just, you know, if there's something with some algae on it, I'll throw it in there since it already has a lot of algae in there. Like if I'm trying to keep one tank clear of algae like this one, I'll move it in there. Also, same deal, if I've got leaves or anything that's just kind of mulmy and um, tattered, I tend to, like, you know, like a lotus that's getting beat up, 
I tend to put it in there because these guys will eat it. They'll chew it up. Um, they don't necessarily... Well, I don't know actually if eating is the right word, but they will rip up their um, their setting. You can see the hedgelata, the bulbitis hedgelata is just ripped to shreds right in the front there. Um, and even like the Anubius and stuff and the Aponagetans, they'll rip things off of. And I don't know if that's when they're fighting and scuffling or if they're doing it just... I don't know, to, to teeth on or what the deal is, but whatever it is, they like tearing things up, and so I'm constantly pulling things out of there and putting new things in there. So there's probably a lot of little microscopic life in that tank, as well as this tank, honestly. And I'm hoping that by the fact that I couldn't do the water changes, I couldn't lift more than two gallons of water at a time, as per doctor's orders and for because of pain, um, that... This actually caused the micronutrients and the microorganisms in the tank to, to explode. And uh, nothing harmful was in there, obviously. No cyanobacteria, anything like that at any level that was harmful. There is a little bit of cyanobacteria with the algae and all the alfuks or layers of living protein film uh, with all sorts of other critters in there. But... Basically, it's it's like a little fish's dream as far as food goes. So, I think that's why they had their babies. And also, they didn't have them in the huts. They must have had them on the hangover part of this rock. See, that rock's not buried. That's one of the best ways for cichlids. If they're not spawning for you, like apistos or um, cribs or any sort of like Lake Victorian cichlids or anything like that, if they don't spawn for you... Uh, get them a rock that has some angles to it and just plop it down on the substrate. And usually on the back side of that rock or a stick, they'll kind of use that as a ledge for their babies. But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that the, that the water chemistry is close enough on this tank. I'm going to move the, the jewel cichlids over uh, the parent's and their babies, uh, I'll probably just catch the parents first because that's easiest. And then I'll put them in a container. And then I'll try to catch the other three, which will kick up everything in the tank. And then we'll just leave the fry bee since they have all the food that's in there. And we'll watch the nitrates and nitrites. Uh, but the fry will probably grow up alone in there. So um, that's the plan right now. And I just wanted to kind of update you guys on it. So uh, I will talk to you later and we'll get some better shots of these uh, amazing fish. In fact, I'm wondering, are they eating their babies already or are they just putting them in their mouth to move them? I, I honestly don't know. Um, what's interesting about these cichlids is when they're caring for their young, and see, the fry are roaming pretty far, but when they're caring for their young, the Turkana jewel cichlids, they actually will um, come and still eat food, whereas the male especially of plecos and of a lot of cichlids like these hoplochromus down here or even angelfish for that matter when they're guarding eggs or um the little sticky yokies they usually won't leave that nesting site or the hatchlings for i mean up to a month usually and oftentimes they can they can suffer and starve from that and uh this tank over here doesn't even have a heater, the Turkana tank, but this room is warm, so it's at 76, just to let you know. pH is probably 6.8 or so, and the TDS is rather high in that one. It's like 300, high for my area. Uh, so it's a high TDS, but fairly low, neutral uh, to lower pH. So that's what's going on. Just wanted to give you an update on them, because some people had asked about my jewel cichlids, and thought that I'd gotten rid of them or something, but nope, still got all six of them that I got from Kenny when they were yay big, when they were less than half an inch, and in six months they've grown up and had their own babies, so uh, they're quick ones, and I'm just hoping on these guys and the Episto uh, next, we'll see, we'll see, thanks for watching guys, I'll talk to you later, bye.